So there's three kinds of questions. There are uh, trivial questions, which are questions that have easy answers that you can put on a multiple choice survey. Uh, then there's bad questions, which uh, divide reality by asking the question it divides reality in an unrealistic way, such as nature, nurture, you know. Uh, and then the third questions are good questions. And good questions are the ones that you can never answer. <laughs> <laughs> but they're worth devoting your life to pursuing them. The computer is an example of what in Buddhism they call emptiness of inherent existence. So emptiness of inherent existence, the key word there is inherent. The computer, of course, is hard and I can knock on it and make it rattle and uh, hurt myself if I bang my head into it. So it's very real. But the computer is interdependent with everything in the world. All of those stories of the labor relations and the minerals and the ideas that were propagated by Ada Lovelace in the 19th century when she was one of the inventors of what we would now call computers. Uh, all of those stories are imminent in the computer. The only thing that isn't imminent in the computer is a separate, independent existence all by itself. So, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. so that's, you know, and so that's the key. So that's how as a, I mean, you and I have never had a conversation before like this. We'll probably have more conversations in the future, but neither of us is having to like refer to a script and figure out what are we going to say next, you know, because we have three and a half billion years of experience as living organisms. And so all of those stories are imminent for us. Uh, my teacher, Gregory Bateson, anthropologist and philosopher, um, there's some interesting parallels between things that Moshe Feldenkrais had to say and Bateson, um, and particularly in the field of learning to learn, you know, that you don't just learn something as though it was a nodule of, you know, what Gregory called quiz bits of knowledge. Um, that there are levels of learning and what you're really learning is learning how to learn and sometimes learning how to learn how to learn. So uh, the contrary to Descartes, I think, therefore I am. And by the way, I could go on and tell you a little bit about how Descartes got kind of a bum rap about that. But anyway, uh, I think, therefore I am is awfully limited and the idea of the separation of body from mind is awfully limited. Um, so in the idea of Ubuntu, which is from South Africa, Desmond Tutu um, made people in the West aware of it. Uh, it's I have my being through your having your being. Mm. I exist through you existing. So we're all one. So we're all, well, it's not that simple. I mean, we're very diverse. We're very different from each other, but we are interconnected. Mm -hmm. We're interdependent. There are huge differences, and those differences make for a very textured, interesting, and difficult world. You know, I mean, there's so many people. My wife uh, told me about, uh, you know, when she was in college, they would have conversations in the dorms to the effect that, well, wouldn't it be better if more people were like us? <laughs> Was what it actually worked out to without anybody saying it in those words. Yeah. But they aren't more like us. You know, there are huge differences in our world. But um, to recognize that there is an enormous interdependence is really vital to our survival. And I think we need those differences in order to grow, in order to learn, in order to experience other choices and other options. Mm -hmm. If we were all the same, 
there wouldn't be anything to learn. So, exactly. so throughout the body, hands and eyes. Right. If, I, if I'd give a, if I'd give a, you know, so this is throughout the body of humanity and throughout the body of the biosphere, hands and eyes. Thank you.